Bromocyclohexane has a wide range of applications in the organic chemistry lab. One of its main uses is a starting material for the synthesis of various organic compounds. For example, bromocyclohexane can be used to produce cyclohexalamine, an important intermediate in the production of pharmaceuticals, rubber chemicals, and surfactants. Bromocyclohexane can be synthesized by the bromination of cyclohexane using a suitable bromine source and a catalyst. The reaction typically takes place in the presence of a Lewis acid catalyst, such as aluminum bromide or iron bromide. The preparation of cyclohexyl bromide in the lab can be carried out by the use of some halogenating agents like phosphorus tribromide or thionyl chloride. Those methods could be advantageous because they are often less labor intensive in terms of purification, but they tend to be more expensive as halogenating agents like those I mentioned are also sometimes difficult to get. So before we proceed to the synthesis, the original procedure called for the use of benzene instead of toluene. Uh, now despite those solvents can be used for the same purpose, that it is to remove water using the Dean Stark apparatus, benzene water isotrope has a boiling point of approximately 70 degrees Celsius, an even lower boiling point than that of the water toluene isotrope of 84.1 Celsius. Uh, the original procedure also says that the reaction time was only 4 hours, whereas in my modification I ran the reaction for at least 5 hours and a half. The higher reaction temperature and longer reaction times alongside with several steps of purification could explain why my final yield was low. Nevertheless, the final cyclohexyl bromide could be used to make a greenier reagent without problems. And finally, some chemical supplies companies uh, sell cyclohexyl bromide at an affordable price, but in my case I needed a small quantity of it and also I didn't want to wait for at least a month so the reagent could be shipped. And that's practically all that needed to be mentioned, so let's go. Hi everyone, today we're going to perform the synthesis of cyclohexyl bromide using cyclohexanol and hydrobromic acid as the brominating agent. We're going to use also some toluene and adin stark apparatus. This procedure is taken from a Russian patent and it's quite different from other types of bromination. Uh, for example, the traditional one that you find in textbooks um, using only hydrobromic acid and sulfuric acid. However, this simple method has a lot of drawbacks. For example, if the alcohol is sensible to the harsh conditions of those types of reactions, there is a lot of possibilities of a, exerting a dehydration instead of a bromination. Cyclohexanol is a secondary alcohol and it can be dehydrated by using acidic media and heat. So we have to modify the conditions in order to promote the halogenation instead of the dehydration. So first of all, we have in this round bottom flask 80 milliliters of azeotropic hydrobromic acid. To this flask we're going to add um, 60 milliliters of toluene reagent grade. Next we are going to measure 20.2 uh, grams of cyclohexanol which represents a molar ratio of uh, 3.5 to 1 acid cyclohexanol. So once we added the cyclohexanol to the acid toluene mixture, we are ready to carry out the reaction. For this, we have our steering, our steering plate, a heating mantle, the rheostat, the flask, a Dean Stark apparatus, and finally a condenser. We heat up the flask to about uh, 90 to 100 degrees for about four or five hours. 
So once the mixture starts boiling, we can observe some of the vapors traveling up the tube and reaching the top. In that point, the toluene water azeotrope will start to condense and at the, and at the bottom of the Dinstark apparatus we will see the formation of two layers. The top one made mostly of toluene and the bottom one in which will be collected uh, water. So after one hour the reaction looks like this. As you may see the color hasn't changed so much and also there are two phases. However if we look at the Dean Stark apparatus we can observe that two layers have formed. The bottom one is mainly water and the top one is toluene. Every so often we need to check the Dean Stark apparatus and remove as much water as necessary for the reaction to proceed. There are also other types of Dean Stark apparatus with a valve at the bottom so you don't need to, to remove the condenser in order to, to drain the fluid but in my case I will have to dismantle the, the condenser in order to remove the water. Once the distillation has finished, we are left with approximately 100 milliliters of toluene. In the round of bottom flask, we are left with a nice product, uh, but it is slightly contaminated. Before we perform the final vacuum distillation of our crude product, we will have to wash it two times with the same amount of uh, distilled warm distilled water in order to remove. Uh, any unreacted cyclohexanol. So after the washing steps we carefully transfer our product into a clean beaker and it's time to dry it out uh, using some anhydrous calcium chloride before the final vacuum distillation step. So this is how our final setup looks like. We are using a short pad distillation apparatus in order to maximize the yield and a vacuum pump capable of reaching almost 15 um, microns of mercury. So after just a couple of minutes we are finally collecting the first drop of our pure products. With the vacuum pump I am using, I am distilling my product at only 32 degrees Celsius. <laughs> 